All right, guys, we are back on this Harmony Monterey, the Mangold Monterey. There's a playlist up there. This is episode two in the playlist. And you'll remember that last time we got the back off, we did a little bit of work on the inside, including getting the hide glue back where it's supposed to be and fixing some kerfing. Now there's some big deal going on about kerfing and lining. Whatever it is, fix it and make sure that if they used it to create a binding channel that you get it in the right spot. Now there's a lot to do on the inside of this guitar, especially the back. So. Let's quit talking and let's get to the bench. No, I'm not in act and I'm in Malibu, California, cultural capital world. But don't let that change the price of this terrible guitar. To the bench, Robin. Okay, back on the bench in Malibu, California, cultural capital world with this mangled Monterey. Now, when I left you last, we had put hide glue all over what was hide glued in the first place in the factory and I did a crack here and it's uh, had an edge clamp on it and we cleaned that up and I want to tell you something about hide glue first off it's not meant to be a filler so we don't try and goop a bunch of hide glue in a spot that needs some fill you'll look at old furniture that's creaky that's been around for hundred years and it was hide glue, so the joints weren't tightly fit, so somebody slopped a bunch in there and after a while it wears off. So, you can see here that we've fixed that crack and you can tell where the hide glue is. And so, I'm going to scrape that down again with our razor blade that's got tape on it. So, wherever the tape is, the blade won't cut, but where it's not, we can just come in and just go along and scrape the hide glue down like this. See that? And if there's one side that's taller than the other, rather than sanding everything down, what we can do is, let me put this in the back of it, it just tilts up where you can see it. We can come in with some lacquer later and build the one side up to the high side rather than trying to sand it down and burying more wood. So again, you just take this. You can also take one that's got just the end sticking out and get some of this stuff here like so. But that's a little trick and I've covered that in other episodes. See that? There we go. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about. When we are going to glue on new binding. I left this here for a reason. Because here's inevitably what's going to happen. We're going to put our binding on. We're going to use binding tape. We're going to put the binding tape there. Let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And then put the binding glue on the adhesive and then pull it down and leave it sit for a few days. And inevitably what will happen is when we come back and pull this off you're going to see even more of the finish that's not there in the first place go on so there's a couple things we want to do one of them is to wipe all this down with naphtha now in california where your own breath has a cancer label warning label there is no naphtha but guess what there's lighter fluid which is the same thing and this stuff is great because it won't harm a finish where acetone will I kind of gave you a hint before. Now I'm telling you the word. Don't use it. So we're going to put some naphtha on here. And what's going to happen here is it's going to spear it off really quick. But we're going to take all of the dirt and grunge and loose stuff. And there's not that much because we went over this with the mystery stuff before. But we're going to get all of this 
like so, and I'm going to feel for spots that I think are going to be in bad shape and get those fixed and cracks and stuff like that. But step one, naphtha. Next thing, we want to go wherever the binding is going to go and make sure there's nothing sticking out. There's a couple pieces of, of the celluloid binding left that I'm going to scrape off like so to make sure that that's not there. So we got wood. See there's another spot of it there. Again, these razor blades that have tape on them become great scrapers. We're going to get all of that off. You don't need to watch me all day. I'll get it. Trust me. All right. There we go. Everything looks good there. Let's get rid of this dust because the next step isn't going to want any dust. All right, so the next step, especially if you have a short-term memory, was binding tape, wore out finish, more finish on the back of the tape once the binding comes off. So to prevent that, you want to use a light coat of sanding sealer. You don't need too much. And this stuff vapors off pretty quickly, but what this is going to do is it's going to stabilize the finish on the area you're working on so it protects it from the binding tape. We are going to do that to the back just as we did and now we're going to do the sides. Same thing, there's going to be binding tape right here. Go over it, make sure you wipe it down with naphtha. I'm not going to worry about trying to finish up or touch up any of this, but that's what we need to do. Okay, the next step is we are going to dress this little uh, 459 at the factory problem here. Pick this up the floor, glue it when it should have been over to here. We have already taken care of the edges and sanded all that down and gotten rid of the glue so there's a good mating surface. They're easy. Anyway, we're going to get this off here because there's a bunch of cracks we need to fix right there. See those? low ride the so hobo hot plate not even on yet and a couple of pallet knives and this contraption this opening knife which has taken on a much better purpose than a butter knife from 1910 anyway we're going to heat all this up and we're going to get under here and take this off and fix these cracks and we might as well do some chick flick teal fabric while we are here. All right, since we had the high glue heater going, we've got a little bit of water and a paper towel. And so we're going to wet this wood down just a little bit. Get the dust off of things while we're here. Because we're going to be working on this entire inside of the back of the guitar here. 
site cell. Um, by the way, if you're doing this in your shed and someone sees you, don't be surprised if they think that these same skills of taking a rag and wiping things down can transfer into the house. They certainly do not. Anyway, off to the hot palette knife. Now we're just going to go in there. We're not prying, just remember. We're heating and walking. Heating and walking. Prying causes wood to snap. I think I'm going to do an episode about the dynamics of hide glue. I got a new book that just really reveals anything and everything you wanted to know or didn't about hide glue. And in fact, it's going to debunk some of the things that I've told you. In fact, most of the things that I've told you along the way. Don't get in a hurry here. Just work this and then put it back on hobo hot plate and let it heat up until it pops loose. The last thing we want to do is cause additional cracks. There we go. Look at that. Don't forget to turn Kobo Hot Plate off. Let's have a look at what was going on here. Yeah. Now, we have three significant cracks going on here. One is there, one is there, and one is starting here. So, we are going to take edge clamps and we're going to clean this up. We don't want to sand this and scrape it because remember, Hide glue is not a filler, it's not Bondo, it's not putty. So we can take a little air and blow that through there and get these pulled back together. And remember, this is an arch surface, it's concave. So the more you pull this in right here, the more this is going to want to spread and split. This one's trying to split all the way up there. Had it not been for this fabric, it would have. So. We're going to put an edge clamp on this, hide glue, it doesn't give you a whole lot of working time so you want to get all your clamps and everything ready and get this put together and then be ready to clamp something up here and then we will put the pieces of wood that are going to fix this. Okay, in addition to our edge clamp which we'll need a couple these are expensive but if you have them and you're going to do this kind of work it's great we need some hot hide glue and we're going to need to make some cleats so you take a piece of wood uh, you can use maple you can use let's put it this way anything is better than nothing I wouldn't use band-aids okay and you just set up a fence on your bandsaw with a light blade and make these things know where the grain is running you see that because you don't want the grain running parallel with the crack you want it running the opposite way and then I just took it to a belt sander and did my manicure on the belt sander without peeling my nails back but narrowed these edges down and made a collection of cleats now we are going to heat up the high glue we are going to put this together here with an edge clamp and then we're going to make sure that this radius by pulling it together here with the edge clamp it doesn't spread up here so we're going to clamp it in a couple places and then install these and then leave it alone okay guys while that hide glue is heating up I want to show you a couple really really cool things most people that work on junk arch tops don't have these but look these are clamps that are meant to be able to work on things that have a radius and look at the size of this one this one is huge it's like for working on a stand-up base or whatever but these things slide together they grab your edge on both sides and then you have a means of padding the top here with this and moving it around to make sure that everything is supported these are really cool if you see these somewhere pick them up because 
they are very expensive. And then you have these deep throated clamps like so. Um, they'll save you some time and energy here if they have this one that's threaded and every once in a while you'll find one that's got something here where you can put this on a bridge inside of say a flat top guitar through the sound hole and then brace up here to get around the support bracing or whatever you need to inside so these are pretty handy and of course our champion here so what I've done is I'm going to dry fit everything before I put glue so I put that radius clamp on there you see that this is a piece of leather this is something you'll walk by people buy this stuff up to do crafts and then get out of it this is great stuff especially when you're working on stuff that has a radius wood doesn't always work for you so you can radius out a block a little bit and then put this in here I did a repair on a mando base right up there right about now we're putting that thing together the back of it was a nightmare so we've got this in place I want to be able to look and see that I'm not clamping this down too much and that the radius trying to come up or move down a little bit is going to be controlled by these things I don't want to tighten them up a whole lot because when there's a crack it doesn't take a lot of pressure on these to make that crack go bigger then always make sure that you have some kind of softener or padding on this so when you go in you want to stabilize the top of that that crack is right there and I'm going to wind this down until I've just got some contact not too much and then we're going to put the edge clamp on the big crack first and you may need to support that behind it so the weight of it isn't hanging there like so and then we are just going to wind these down and get them snug again there are softeners or pieces of tape or whatever you want to call it softeners a crane rigging term so your chokers don't go across the edge of something by the way while we're on cranes watch out when you're using nylon slings because if they slip on a tree box they'll cut now I've got these snug down I'm watching this and I just tighten this up and look that'll come right together I can feel this and find out is there anything awry that I need to fix but that right there is ready for high okay so I've got that radius clamp on there I've got literally bean bags bags of beans inside this velvet bag I can turn this up to get my work where it needs to be I've got a number of big wood blocks that I can put here and some smaller ones to support whatever I am using in terms of clamps I don't want the weight of something dragging the rest of it down we're going to keep everything as nice and smooth as this junky arch top will let us okay so this hide glue is going to set up fairly quickly do you know why we have fingernails so you can use your hide glue pot and not burn yourself too badly yes there are leather strips on the bottom of the hide glue pot we have this wonderful brush that has been used for hide glue before that's why it's a little bit stiff we want to make sure that we have an ample supply of paper towels and hot water like so and then we're just simply going to go along with this high viscosity high glue and paint it in there like so and moving quickly we're going to put on edge clamp and we're going to repair these one at a time and we are not going to put cleats on them we're just going to pull everything together again it's good to have something here that will support all of this there we go 
and then we're going to come in off the side with one of these clamps and make sure that everything stays together up on top like so okay okay while we're waiting for that to dry we're going to take our strip of chick flick teal linen and we're going to reinforce this part up here noting that that crack is has been repaired earlier which will give us the opportunity to put the linen in by simply coating the old linen and coming up to the edge and smoothing everything out remember we want to work fast because this stuff sets up pretty quickly yeah there's not going to be a lot of fine tone coming out of this thing something tells me I certainly don't want to take the old stuff off there was a bit of it around the edge that had come in a little bit too far but we'll do that and I've rounded the edges off as you can see and then we'll just place that right there like so pull it this way just a tad there we go and press it down we're going to top coat that when everything dries but this will give us an opportunity now to take one of our cleats up here where we had that top crack we're going to take it away from the edge where everything is going and we will put it where it's not going to get in the way of the curving or anything else and we will put a clamp on that Okay, I put a cleat up here and clamped it and these clamps that look like this come in pretty handy when you got multiple things going on. And again, you want some stuff here to support them so they're not all tweaked and crooked because if they are, then where everything comes together won't be level and there will be some work to do. Now, you might figure out if you're practicing this kind of skill set on some old junk it might help you in the future if you start working on some stuff that's maybe not so junky we've had some time for this fabric to set up we'll put some hot high glue over the top and make sure everything stays in place brush with the way the fabric is going is so as not to pull up stuff along the edges keep the coat nice and smooth everywhere like so get those air bubbles and rises out of there if you work it right it's like all those skills you had putting decals on a model airplane or stickers on an oil field hard hat i know those are all skills that y'all have right i can't be the only one that's an expert in everything of twos all right there we go i think you get the idea i'll show you what it looks like when everything is done okay now it's time to put on some cleats right here but before I do that, I want to show you that there was this factory piece of something or other here. And I've cut a piece of maple grain running this way that we're going to put right here. Once all of these cracks are sealed up, that's not yet. We're going to put it in the same place along the same line there, except we're going to put it in straight. But before we do that, it's time that we can put a couple of cleats in here 
to help keep this main crack closed. There we go. Ample supply right there. Take a little bit of the stuff that's squeezing off there. Now we're going to come in below where this is going to lay in there. Make sure we got plenty of room. But yet stay away. This is where the tail block is going to come in. And you can see from the shadow that it's right there. So we're going to stay away from all of that. Now we're going to use, oh look at this clamp. Straight out of Covers Paradise. This is old stuff. Sometimes we need more hands and fingers than we have. And then we're going to come in right over here with this one. Now it helps at the top of that cleat is flat because if you bevel them too much it's going to want to keep coming off the edge so big block of wood here helps us out everything is drying you don't want those the weight of these hanging down to just open up cracks everywhere else and to make sure we're good we can still slip this in here when it comes time to do that. All right, we have an entire army of clamps going on here, and I made up a piece of this to replace this, and we are going to put some glue on all of this right now. Ah, hide glue is hot, hello. Put that there like so. We want to make sure that we got that where it's not hanging down. And then we got a couple of these big clamps here that are strong spring clamps. Make sure we can't get anything underneath there. And coming in from there. There we go. All right, one more. While all this is going to set up overnight, I'm going to put one last cleat right there. Perfect. Let's wait for some glue to dry. All right, there we go. We're going to add this episode up to that playlist right up there. People are wondering, why do you do the same thing over and over on some guitars and record it. Okay, so what I have figured out is if I say Monterey, <laughs> rented lips, Harmony Monterey, some people who have a Harmony Monterey might look on YouTube and go, I wonder how to fix this thing. And rather than dig through all my 400 and some episodes, they might just go, you know what? I think I will follow this playlist through and watch how to fix it. So, oddly enough, I heard from my friend Ron in Tennessee, Clarkdale, Tennessee, not Clarkdale, Mississippi, and he was telling me that he had a guitar or has a guitar that is wiggling around and won't stay in tune. And what do you know, when he took the strings off, it went by on some motorcycle there and it came right off. So I'll tell you what, I would rather have a guitar that dried out than one with a bowed neck and no truss rod. So where we're at now is 
I am thinking about putting new frets on this thing because they're very small and I've got enough um, room here to be able to pitch the neck back just a little bit more and then we're going to end up putting the floating bridge on like that see so going into the next episode I think what we'll focus on is deciding that we are going to put the neck back on I am actually going to run a bolt through the neck believe it or not like I always do it's not going to be a screw you'll be able to turn it in and take it out because there will be a t-nut on the inside of the head block um, and I think so we got fretting we've got bolt the neck glue the neck back on get everything in shape and I want to I want to do the neck um, actually before I put the back on because remember if you flex this at all your action is going to be off so we are going to put a hole through here there's one started here already you can see it yeah always tag your stuff so you know what it is what year it is and all that but anyway I've got a hole here it's not a very big hole because we're going to use a Forstner bit to inset this and then that bolt is going to come through it's going to have an Allen head and it's going to come through and go through a T-nut here so I want everything lined up before I put the back on now I may just screw on a, a yardstick temporarily to keep everything right I'm actually going to set the neck angle without the back on and that takes some tricks so you never know what's going to happen but this thing appears to be pretty solid um, yeah, I definitely buy these all day long when I get done it's going to have a pickup because I've already put the pilot holes right there I'm going to put the electronics in and everything before I put the back on so this is kind of unorthodox but that's me we'll get everything set up and then we'll put the back on and it will have new frets it'll be a screaming hot rod it'll be the ugliest thing you've ever seen but it will be tough enough to do dive bars so hey thanks for watching give me a subscribe and i will see you on this pos next time